Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my channel and today in this video from the Filament 3 series, we are going to understand what are hooks and what are the different hooks available to us when a record is getting created. So first of all, to understand what is hooks, just imagine that we are trying to modify some functionality in the core features of a package or a framework. For example, Laravel gives us the model.create method or the insert method where we are making a database entry. Now, although there are multiple ways of doing this, let's just say when an insert is about to happen or let's just say once the insert has happened, we want to trigger something. That can be anything, right? So Laravel gives us the boot methods. These are almost like, you know, we can hook into those functions and attach behaviors when the model is getting saved. Similarly, Filament 3 also gives us hooks, which we can use when a resource is getting saved with its different states. So first of all, let's understand what are the different states available to us when a resource is getting created. So if you go to the documentation of Panel Builder, Resources, Create Records, we see this lifecycle hooks. And there are quite a few, I would say like three, three, six. Six hooks are available to us and they're quite self-explanatory. If you uh, read the names, for example, before fill runs before the form fields are populated with their default values. So I would assume this is something like when a form is being rendered for an edit view, okay, or maybe, you know, the validation or we try to submit and then we are getting the old record, something where we are, you know, pushing the values through the mount function or something like that. You know, that's when this will come into picture. And again, because we have an after fill, it makes me believe that there is a before fill, which means till that point, the input field doesn't have that value. And this hook is going to get fired when the field has the value. Similarly, we have two before and after for the validation. And we have before and after for the create. And for this video, I'm going to show you the two major difference between the before and after of a create hook. So I have this cust create customer um, page. That's how we added this mutate data before create. We added that redirect URL. We added a custom notification when the create has happened, right? So we were doing quite a few modifications to our uh, resource creation process, right? And then there are these hooks. So the first one is before create. Obviously, as the documentation said, this is going to trigger just before the create is happening. And the after create is something which is going to get triggered when the insert has happened. So I have these two logs in my code and let me open up my log file as well. Okay. And let me try and create a new record then. So I'll go over here. Okay. And now we see all the basic stuff around the redirect URL and stuff. But then the before create hook got triggered. But this log has no value because as we said right now the record was not created so we couldn't get anything like that so if we have something like you know if you want to check something before the create is happening like maybe whether a user is still an admin or not or maybe whether the user is still subscribed or not any anything which you know is going to make an impact if you want to check that before you are inserting it then this hook is the perfect place because you haven't done an insert and before that you can 
do all your checks. Now, if you want to do something after the creation has happened, for example, if you want to send an email, if you want to do um, make entries to any other analytics database or something like that, then this hook of after create is your perfect place. But again, I would strongly recommend that at these situations, it is a good idea to just raise an event and be done with it because I'm quite sure these things are running on the same process, which means uh, rather on the same request. So if you are running something which is long running uh, task, for example, you are making a query which is quite long or you are actually trying to send an email, right? It is going to take time and that is bad user experience. So we see that this is happening, but then there is also one more thing in filament which you need to understand, which is the ability to halt. Okay. So if, for example, I add this, okay, and this is after create, I can't do that. Let's just say I do it over here and I add a notification. I'm not sure exactly if it will redirect or it will just pause on that place, but let's just see what happens. Okay. Mm, it doesn't expect a return, so that's fine. I should ideally add these return types. Let me do that. And now, if I try to create, let's see what happens. So, we got a notification that a new customer got added, but I stopped it, which is fine. And obviously, that means because I was not redirected. So the create didn't happen. And if I refresh, I don't see that customer. So you see, this is how you can hook into the flow, check for certain things if required, and you can stop the process. Okay. You can do everything which is uh, possible with filament because I even created a notification. And then this function ensures that the process will not move forward. So yeah, that's what I wanted to cover in this video. Let me know what you think you can do with these hooks. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me on my Discord server. And yeah, that's about it, guys. If you like this video, do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.